Kasmir Augustus. I am a resident magistrate. This is my first station uh, in the judiciary. However, this is not my first time to interact with uh, matters FGM. Uh, initially, before I joined the judiciary, I was uh, serving as a prosecution counsel in the office of the Director of Public Prosecutions. And uh, there I interacted with matters FGM, uh, though not in this county, but in Baringo County, especially in East Pokot area, where it is also rampant, but uh, still prevalent. Um, FGM, the legal regime managing FGM is the prohibition of FGM Act number no. 3 of 2011, and it sets different offenses uh, regarding FGM in part 4 from uh, section 19 to 25 there are various offenses regarding FGM and um, I realized that most Kenyans are not enlightened about it especially the, 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 there is a bit in section 25 that talks about abusive or derogatory language even if you just use abusive or derogatory language towards a victim that is an offense. Um, in section uh, 19, it's, it sets uh, FGM as an offense, and when you go on, you'll be able to see other offenses like procuring, aiding and abetting, uh, your premises being used for FGM. So it is a whole spectrum, and um, many Kenyans are not yet enlightened about this act. In section 29, it sets the sentence. A minimum, if it is a fine, a minimum of 200,000, and if it is a imprisonment, a minimum of three years. So those are the lower limits. The law does not set the upper limit. So as a judicial officer, we have the discretion from case to case, um, uh, looking at the various circumstances, and um, you set either a fine, uh, the, the, the custodial one, or both. So it, it is a good law and um, it is progressive. Um, I remember in 2021, one Dr. Tatu Kamau went to court uh, uh, challenging the constitutionality of the FGM Act that it should be abolished, that uh, people can, women and girls, can opt to just undergo FGM out of their own will. But the case in 2021, the High Court, uh, that was Justice Lydia Chode, uh, said that uh, you cannot perform FGM out of will. It must have medical reasons. So this is something that is deeply engraved in this society we are serving, especially the Korea community, and I've uh, looked at several cases, decided that have stemmed from this community, and it's still going on. This week alone, so far we've uh, had seven children from Mabera who have uh, undergone the same, and people have taken plea. We have like around four, four people uh, of course, parents, parents of the children for aiding and abetting, and then uh, uh, the, the person who is alleged to have been uh, doing the FGM. Today they'll be in court. We gave them a mention date today. And uh, as a court, we also decided that we shall expedite these matters because children are involved, and where children are involved, there are children in need of care and protection. We've also, we've also placed them um, in a children's home so that uh, they can be taken care of and so that given that they are witnesses, they are not interfered with. We will endeavor to hear those matters as quick as possible. For instance, particularly for this lady, her hearing is next week on Wednesday. She took plea this week and we shall hear next week. So we shall expedite these matters. And also given that this is the month of uh, children, service month for children, we shall ensure that uh, we do what we can. So we shall also be calling upon, of course, state actors and state actors, the prosecution, to assist us in ensuring that uh, justice is served. Yes, the, the, there is, there is. But of course, that one, uh, I know the challenge will only come to proving the same. 
uh, you know that, that that's like uh, committing to uh, you are attempting to commit uh, FGM. Uh, the challenges just come in proving that uh, someone was in preparation. But if it can be proved, for instance, if you are found with the tools off, if you are found with girls who are ready for that, by the way, having tools uh, that uh, are used in uh, uh, FGM, it's an offense. So we really rely on the community. You know, it's at the grassroots. We really rely on them to be able to come out and report and then other state actors will take action. No, now that comes to the Constitution Article 49 1H. You see, everyone is entitled to bond regardless of the offense. So if we have a law that uh, restrains them from not being bonded or being bailed, then it will be unconstitutional. We, we, we presume that they are innocent until proven guilty. Uh, of course, the law sets a minimum, uh, uh, a lower limit. So it is up to courts to impose hefty fines, to impose harsher sentences, not to be lean in their decisions, so that you create a deterrent effect in the community. As you have said, the community is also not very enlightened, and uh, we call upon state and state actors, uh, our partners, uh, the CSOs, uh, they are called civil society organizations, yes, uh, to, to partner with the justice system so that uh, the people get to know about the law on FGM. And uh, it is also a mindset. You know, this is a culture. It is not, it is not just a legal problem. It's also a social problem. It's a culture, but uh, it, it has no place in the modern day. So it is up to enlightening the people that this culture is egregious, this practice is uh, inhuman, it is degrading and it is torturous and should not have uh, a place in the modern society. Particularly while I was serving in Baringo County, we used to have barazas with the people of West Pokot in a place called Nginyan and uh, Chemolingot and we used to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with them, public forum with them to explain to them what the law is, what their culture is, and uh, the nexus between those two. So um, I'm still new in this community, but I intend with time to talk to them. Uh, I have, uh, in my own personal capacity, I've been talking to the girls of Kehancha uh, Mixed Secondary School, and we have different programs. With the time, I shall be able to do my part, uh, yes.